Ask Alex. Ask Alex. Because you don't know what you don't know. And if you don't know, now you know. Yeah. Cool. So, John, tell me about you. Where are you based? I am based in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh-huh. Sorry, my echo is having a conversation with me. So, where are okay. you based? I'm based in Atlanta. Oh, okay. Uh, Georgia's, yeah. right? That's correct. Yes. Cool. I'm, I'm clearly not American. Cool. So tell me, what is it you're working on? What do you start with? So about 20 years ago, I purchased 24 different world's best domains. And mm-hmm. I think you may have seen those, like world's best mom.com, best dad.com. Sure. And what I would like to do is to create where people can recognize or honor their mom or dad or boss mm-hmm. by creating a page at those sites. And so I think it's fairly unique. I haven't noticed anything like it on the net. You know, you can build e-cards and send e-cards to people, but this is an actual page and it's a private page by default. So when the recipient receives the page, the recipient can decide to make it public. And if the page goes public, then other people can view it and they can make comments on it. Okay, so you can make it public then, and so it'll index. Exactly. The recipient is able to make it public, not the creator. Okay, okay, sure. So what problem are you fundamentally solving? So the reason for that is just in case somebody creates, if Mark creates a page for Sally at worldsbestgirlfriend.com, and she can't stand Mark, and, you know, it's not going to cause problems. But if she likes Mark and she wants to make the page public, then others can view it. Um, why does this need to exist? I'm sorry? Why, why does this need to exist? Uh, because it's just a way to recognize other people. So, if, I mean, quite often I'll see on Facebook where people say, wow, I missed my dad. I had the world's best dad and blah, blah. And this is a way to make it public to basically show the world who your father was or who your mom is and how you appreciate her. And so how do you make money? All kinds of ways. So one of the easiest ways to make money would currently it's, it's free and there are very basic templates, but you could, you could make the templates more elaborate and people would pay a subscription. So say $10, for getting more elaborate templates. And then okay. you can always do the, you know, you can always do the shirts and mugs and things like that. And sell so world's best mom.com mugs or, or shirts. But then one of the other things, uh, Jarvis, I think it has great potential and that is for sponsored pages. So let's say a page is free. Let's say there are people in Africa, they don't have a credit card to use, but they still want to use the service. And maybe there would be a local brewer that would say, hey, you know, we'll give you, you know, five quadra for a page as long as that page carries our sponsored brand on it. Okay. And so wh- what, are you, what are your struggles right now? So you sent me an email with a couple of sort of generic yeah. questions, but what's the crux of yep. what you're stuck with? So I guess, sure. There, there are two things, I guess, basically. I mean, I realize that the idea is valid. But what I want to do is be able to, you know, it takes quite a bit more money uh, to be able to get this thing looking properly. It's, it's, it's ready to show investors, I think, in another two weeks, but it's not ready to take to the public. I don't know. Am, am I able to share my screen with you? Yeah, sure. Feel free. Press the share screen button. Okay. Yeah. So he, let me know when that shows up. Yeah. Okay. Go on. Okay. So here's the uh, here's the email that you'll get, and it says, "Congratulations, Johnny! Thanks to the world of you." And then down here will be the link to the page, and you can see this page is for a pet. So eventually, what it will say is, "WorldBestPet.com is Sparky." Okay. Sure. And when you hit that link. Then you'll come up to your page and there's Sparky. But you can see how basic that template is. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to take this to the public just yet. But now watch this. When I make this page public, then suddenly I'm able to rate it. 
So if I go down here and I go to pet, here Sparky shows up. All right. And I can do that and I can give it, let's say, let's give it four stars. Well, I've got to sign in. So then, yeah, so I'm logged in. As you can see here, I'm logged in with my Facebook. I've given it four stars. Yeah. Right. And then what should happen, what will happen, as soon as I give it four stars, Jarvis, the next page will appear. And this is going to be driving up six. So there will be multiple page views if people want to see, you know, other pages that are out there. And then also it will show up here. So if we've got Sparky here, you can see it's been viewed 13 times. It has a rating of five stars on average. Mm -hmm. So you can go there. Well, this is a different Sparky. But but the other thing is once you're logged in, then you can make then you can make a, a comment on it. Right? And then that comment automatically comes right to the top. What do you think? Sure. Okay. Isn't that cool? Yeah. yeah. So one of the things, I mean, I realize we want to be very careful about children and, uh, you know, we just don't want a lot of information out there. However, if people are comfortable to have their pet or their mother or whatever, then this will be accessible to anyone. Okay, so what are you stuck with now? Right now, what, am I, what do you mean, what am I stuck with? Well, so why do you reach out? So you mentioned some things about wanting to sign up for public benefits corporations and wanting to yeah. raise money. So is raising yep. money your core issue or is it getting a peer? Yeah, it is. Yeah, raising money is the next core issue. Okay, so specifically, I mean, fundraising is a broad topic. Right. So fundraising for a couple of things. Number one, for legal, the illegal, legal aspects. Uh, ensuring the privacy settings are correct and all the all of that, and then secondly to upgrade the templates, and then thirdly for uh, for marketing. I realize marketing takes a lot. I think I have a good a good plan for the marketing though. I had told you there are two things. There's a sponsored one which is free, and then there is a subscription where if you pay ten dollars you'll get better templates. What I would like to do is for people, if people build five pages, then we will give them the better templates. Or if they build 10 pages, then we'll, build, we'll throw in better tools for them to create pages. And what this will do, this will get people motivated to create more, pe more pages and make people more aware of the sites. Okay, look, the, fundamentally the bar for fundraising has increased and increased over the years. It used to be back sure. in you know, the, late, the late 90s or the 2000s that you needed 8 million just to buy servers and start an internet company in the first right. place. That's gone. Okay? Right. Um, and so the bar for getting funded by people just basically keeps on increasing. And so you know, even for angel investors now, they want to see a product with some element of product market fit attraction. So the bar is just getting higher. Sure. Um, I mean, even for, say, a SaaS company, you know, charging recurring income, you know, it used to be 1 million ARR was enough. That's more gone to about 1.5 now. And so with the advent of, you know, all these scripts, et cetera, that you can do to launch sites faster, all these services, people basically expect more. Uh, combined with that, there's more and more people starting up companies, and so investors have more choice. So the sure. unfortunate reality now is putting, you know, building a basic product, not having any traction is not going to be enough. And so mm -hmm. you, know, you need fundraising to literally just build your MVP properly to show that people actually care about the product, since investors now know what lean startup methodology means. Um, you know, the only source of capital then is going to be principally yourself or angel investors. And with regards to angel investors, right. the people who typically fund you are people who have some sort of relationship with you. Um, right. Ideas get funded if you're famous, but most people aren't famous. And the reason why famous people get funded is that they've made people money before. And again, that's not most people. So startup is just fundamentally sure. hard. And so if you're building a product, you need to build the base level for you to be illustrative that you've proven out some base level hypothesis that people like my products and they're willing to share right. it. Therefore, my acquisition cost is lower because there's an element of virality built into it, et cetera. And you know, at that point, 
you can show some pretty numbers and, you know, investors will be more willing to take you seriously. But, you know, fundraising is always hard, but it's a lot easier when you're fundable in the first place. And so you're either fundable mm-hmm. or you're not. You just need to be quite realistic about that because you'll go off and you'll sure. blow six months and all you did was blow smoke and, you know, you just blown six months of runway focusing on fundraising from investors. So if, right. you, if you are fundamentally not fundable and you're aware of that, then you need to figure out what it is you need to do in order to get there. And so if you're a sole founder and you're outsourcing development team, then maybe a better investment of time is to find a technical co-founder who can build the product with you uh, out of sweat equity, mm-hmm. which is easier said than done. But, you know, no one said startup was easy. Um, so sure. you just need a hustle. Yeah. Um, so that's just the starting reality. And then in regards to fundraising, it's a process you run. You, you generate your material, um, so you're prepared. You practice your pitches and the questions investors will ask you. You get a long list of people. You start with people that you don't really care about to get some feedback because your pitch probably sucks at the start. And then you know you yeah. go out to the world and pitch as many people as possible and ideally keep them running at the same pace so that you can try to create some element of competitiveness within that in order to kind of get fundamentally better terms. So again, it doesn't happen for everyone, but you only need one person to fund you if they can write the size of the ticket that you're looking for. Sure. Um, but fun, there's a lot to learn about fundraising, but it starts with having something to sell. Right. No, I agree. So do you think this, this product that I have so far, it's unique though. You, you don't see many things like this on the internet. Well, I mean, I see crazy people in the street all the time. It doesn't mean I want to talk to them. <laughs> right. Yeah. So just because it's unique and different doesn't mean it's good or better than whatever it is. So like uh, the current, in the current days with some sort of social platform, all you're fundamentally doing is vying for time. And so that could be on Snapchat or Facebook or CNN or whatever site. But Uh there's some element of a zero-sum game that you need to take it away from someone. So why are they going to your platform instead of Facebook, where you can set up Facebook pages, right? So worldsbestmom.facebook.com. Yeah. No, I understand what you're saying. I think one of the things I would like to do is perhaps pitch it to Hallmark or someone that's already in that space. But the natural question would be, why do they need you and why can't they just do it themselves? Well, because they don't have the domains. So I do bring the domains. Yeah, but they're just domains. I mean, Facebook was called FaceMash. They started out with FaceMash, built something uh-huh. that half of Harvard used within a day, and eventually changed it to the Facebook and then to Facebook. So domains don't really matter. What happens, what matters is your execution. And proving that you're solving a problem. So if you put something up which is okay, but mm-hmm. it appeals to people, then they're going to find it, right? Well, yeah. Okay, but let's say, where would you post your mom? Would you rather post your mom at worldsbestmom.com or worldsbestmom.net? Well, I'd probably just send her a card and a thank you note. <laughs> I wouldn't put my mom anywhere. Right. But a lot of people would. I mean, a lot of people don't mind putting their, you know, their friends out there. They're not so much interested in all this security stuff. So I don't know. I really don't see a downside, Jarvis. I don't know if I see an upside either, though. Well, you're creating a platform to enable others to appreciate people. Yeah, but why do I want to appreciate someone else's mom or their dog? I can look at dog pictures on Instagram, right? Sure, but you don't have to influence everybody. Just maybe five or six people. Let's say at the office, let's say one of your employees creates a, a page at worldsbestboss.com is Jarvis. And then the rest of the employees can go down there and they can make comments on it and say, hey, you know, we appreciate you, blah, blah. Okay, but then people can go to that site, they'll look at it once and then disappear again. I don't see how your daily active users or your attention rates are going to be high. They're going to be, the bounce rate is going to be 100%. Right. No, I understand. But the thing is, if people are able to comment on it, then I think that will draw some people back just to say, hey, who's commented on my page and what's going on with it? But I understand there's not as much stickiness as, as for the other sites. I realize that. Yeah, look, I mean, like, I have my own opinions. You'll have your own opinion. But fundamentally, sure. the only thing that matters is that you get users or not. And so, you know, you need to put out a basic product that has a compelling value proposition to your 
tribe, your niche that you're targeted on, and then figure out how do you acquire them, how much do you acquire them for, how much they ultimately, well, paying can be later down the road, but what level sure. of engagement do you have? Do you have return rates? How many people set up pages? You know, your funnel metrics. And if they don't happen, okay. then I don't care what you think. I care what your numbers say. Sure. Because look, you know, fundamentally all startup is, it's uh, outsourced innovation for corporates, right? So fundamentally you need to be solving something that makes enough people happy that, it costs, that a corporate wants it for some particular kind of reason, right? And if you, get, if you can last that long, then people ultimately buy you. You know, most people don't IPO, right? But you need to come up with something that's solving a problem for customers in the short term, but the corporate in the long term, who then will give you the big money for it. And no investor is going to fund you unless there's big money there. Right. Okay. So the, the size of the problem needs to be meaningful enough for you to kind of get anywhere, you know? Um, that's fundamentally yeah. all startup is. It's, you know, so I was talking to a guy who sold companies for about, you know, with two founders, they sold companies for like 1.4 billion in aggregate, right? And mm -hmm. they'd worked in the insurance space before and they were basically decided to do it again. I was asking him, you know, why they did it. I said, look, you know, ultimately startup is, startup's just building a better mousetrap, you know? And right. it doesn't matter what you do, you acquire people for one, you sell them for two, and hopefully you've got a business model. So ultimately, I think the whole thing about this startup founder passion thing is totally overrated because at the end of the day, so VCs care about passion because they don't want founders to quit. And it takes you seven years or something to get the maximum value out of your company. So if you are mission driven and you care about whatever it is you're solving, if someone gives right. you an offer for a $40 million check, which is a life changing amount for you and I, and a lot of people, sure. it's not, doesn't move the needle for investors. So the business needs to be sizably scaled. So I think this founder, the passion thing is totally overrated. All you need to be doing okay. is thinking, what is the lowest barrier to me acquiring lots of users that then someone will eventually want. It doesn't really matter what you're doing. You just, it needs to be selling a widget that someone has a problem with. It, you know, that problem ideally needs to be real and sure. long lasting if you want to have longevity out of it, because the cheapest customer you're ever going to have is the one that you already have. McKinsey found that it's seven times cheaper to retain customers and is to acquire a new ones. So is your value prop beyond a fad where someone logs in, it's like, ha, oh, very funny. And then just churns out. Yeah. Right. Um, so it doesn't really matter what you do. Okay. You just need to solve a really big problem for people. And if you solve a really big problem for people and lots of people start using it, then investors will go looking for you. If you've watched like the social network or the, whatever it was called, you know, the, the Facebook movie, you'll find, um, what's his face, the guy who then became president, Sean Fanning or whatever his name was, um, mm -hmm. is in some girl's dorm room and she's raving about the Facebook. And he's like, what is this thing? It's like, oh, everyone's using it. And he's like, oh, everyone's using it. I need to meet this guy, right? And people will go looking for you. And that's a much easier way to raise money on better terms than, right. yeah. hey, I've got this little idea. I've kind of tinkered around and built like a base level product, but don't really have any customers. And like, what everyone will tell you I know. if you get meeting. Sure. Oh, that's nice. Come back to me when you've got traction. Right. So that's just the, that's the reality. And so if you, if you ship something and you go, Oh, people like it. Great. I mean like the easiest way for you to validate your business model now without spending a dime more is to, uh, you know, go to Upwork or something, pay someone a couple hundred bucks, and get them to, to set you up a really nice landing page with a CTA called Action up in the hero okay. and be like, do you want to set up a, a, a page for your mom on worldspressmom.com or whatever it is? Maybe you can set up five variants and see if one thing works better than another and see if people push okay. that button and sign up for it. And then be like, oh, we're actually not live yet. Ha ha. We'll let you know on the wait list when we're live. And so, you know, spend a couple of hundred bucks and save Facebook ads and see if any, if the traffic will convert or not. And if you've got CPCs okay. of 50 bucks, you're pretty sure it's not working, right? But if people okay. are signing up to that forum, you know, you solve something and you can do that in like a weekend, scrappy or in a week, and you will save yourself a hell of a pain. But if you, if you have a hypothesis that after spending a couple of hundred bucks on Facebook and a nice landing page and no one signs up for it, 
Mm-hmm. You go, do you know what? This doesn't work. I need to figure out a better mouse trap because I'm wasting my money and I'm wasting my time. Okay. That's the easiest way to figure out is just pretend you have a great product with all right. the features maybe that you might think people want on it, explained in a nice sure. way, and just see, does it convert? If it doesn't convert, then you need to be sober and go, I'm wasting my time. I need to figure out something smarter. Right. But just be very, right, be, be very just sort of okay. dispassionate about what you're doing. Think of John's time is worth something. And so how do I allocate my time to a project or multiple projects? And if your ROI is not high, mm-hmm. think, screw this thing, do something else. But be very data-driven and hypothesis-driven that this only works if X, if not, therefore, do or die. Good. Okay, thank you, Jarvis. I think I lost you there toward the end, but I did hear you say to be data-driven and ensure that uh, we have something that's palatable and acceptable to others. So thank you. Yeah, but so if you, if you missed the point, it's it, all this is is an idea that you're testing, okay? This can't be right. your personality. It can't be, you know, your reason for being, right? Maybe startup is your reason for being, but world's best doesn't have to be your thing. Just it's a, an experiment to validate if I should spend any more time on it. And you need to keep okay. on thinking, what is the quickest way to validate if you're wasting your time or not, or if it'll go further. And so if you do that test, like I told you, you could then say, okay, it looks like this actually works. What do I need to validate for me to spend any more time on it? Uh, and then you figure out what those key points are. And then, you know what, maybe okay. three, four years time, you get to your series B. And at that point, you want to scale like mad. You know, the key questions you need to validate is if I take $10 million, can I acquire 20 million customers or something? Can I scale this business right. or not? Because again, even if you raise a bunch of money, your startup is worth nothing until you sell it, Right. So actually right. working another four years a waste of time if you won't actually be able to scale it because you'll have liquidation preferences and what the investors have given you. So even if you get a couple of mil, it's probably going straight out the door to the VCs before you see a dime. Exactly. Um, so just be very dispassionate about what you're doing. Just very numbers driven. Should I be doing this? What do I need to prove or disprove? And most importantly for you, stop building your product until you actually know people want it. Okay. And, and just to clarify, what did you mean by CTA? What does that stand for? Call to action. Call to action, okay. Okay, so you have like the, above the fold, like the first page in your website is typically like a hero page, okay? And it's right. like um, show that you appreciate people um, right. in five minutes, okay? And then the call to action could be set up a page now, right? And see do people okay. mash that big orange button or not? And then the next page could be add your email to start up. And the next page could be you're on the wait list. We'll let you know when we're there. But it's, you want to have like one call to action, which is trying to get people to do something to prove that, um, that this makes sense. So if you want right. to see, you know, an example of a, of a page that is found from a really great growth hack the other day, go to landon.co, L-A-N-D-E-N. Uh, CO. Yeah. Okay. And here is an example, probably you can probably copy for a lot of reasons actually, but they just set up a landing page in probably the fastest way you can ever possibly do it. Um, and so you can actually see what the examples of them look like. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, but with this, you can just bosh out landing page in 10 minutes. Oh. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, Uh, good. I'll look through that later today. Yeah. But you'll see, like, you know, if you just start, it says, this could be your new landing page, some bold text, and it has get started. That's their call to action. If you kind of start building the page, but it's a super easy way to understand the basic structure of what a landing page looks like. Um, Sure. But yeah. that's, that's fundamentally what you can say. So you could try Landon or you could just, you know, hire someone on Dribbble or Upwork or something to build you. But it, the, you, 
if you're going to make this the test, you have to make the effort to make sure that your landing page is, is good because it could be that people don't convert because your landing page sucks. So right. put in time yep. properly into writing good copy, selling benefits, not features, and giving you a shot to figure out if your, if your business will actually work or not. Okay. All right. Well, that sounds good. Thank you for that. Yeah. Any other questions? No, I don't think I have any. Thank you. Okay, cool. All right, John, it was nice talking to you. Thank you, Jarvis. Cheers. All right. Bye. Bye.